Mishpucha, it's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel. I am here today with a review of the first book that I read in 2021 for my Arab American Literature Project, which was Ataf Rooms, A Woman Is No Man. Um, so this is her debut novel. It was published in 2019. It made it to the semifinal round of last year's Book 2 Prize for fiction. It tells the story of a Palestinian woman named Isra who immigrates, who immigrates to the United States at age 18 to marry a Palestinian man in his 30s who is named Adam. Um, she lives with his family in Brooklyn and she's expected to immediately start having children and to tend to domestic duties. Um, she's rarely allowed to even leave the house. Um, her story is set in the 1990s. We also follow a separate timeline of her oldest daughter, Dea. Um, that's set in 2008. And in Dea's timeline, Isra and Adam have both died some years ago, um, which is not really a spoiler because you find that out pretty early on. Um, so that has left Dea and her three younger sisters to be cared for by Adam's parents, um, Farida and Khaled. Uh, um, so Farida is pressuring Dea to talk to potential marriage suitors, even though at this point Dea is only like 16 or 17 years old. Um, and then Dea is contacted by a mysterious stranger who claims to know some secrets about her family's past. And that's pretty much like the setup of the book, um, without giving too much away or spoiling anything. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that I quite liked this book overall. Um, I thought that the portrayal of the effects of domestic abuse on Isra seemed very realistic. Um, she's very quiet. She retreats into herself. She blames herself for the abuse, which I think is quite common among victims of abuse to do that. Um, it's not necessarily the reaction we would want to see from a victim of abuse, but I think it's a pretty common one. Um, so I found that a realistic portrayal. I also appreciated the portrayal of how few choices women, especially immigrant women, can have in an insular community. We are reminded several times throughout the novel that Isra is a foreigner in the United States with no money, no education, no job skills, no resources. Um, and so even as it's painful to see her remain in a bad home situation, we understand why she stays. Um, I also really like that this novel is in some ways a love letter to books. I was 100% here for that. Um, you see several of the characters really kind of use books as a means of escapism, but also as a means of exploring possible other opportunities for themselves and learning more about themselves through books. And again, as an English teacher, I was totally here for that. That made my heart sing. <laughs> um, I also really liked the ending to this book because I feel like it shows some clear character growth and development for both of our main characters. And I'm not gonna say anything else about the ending because I don't wanna spoil it in case you haven't read it, but I, I did quite like the ending. Um, and then the other thing I really liked about this book is I just feel like it was a very brave and courageous book for Asaph Room to write. So she said, she has said in interviews that this novel is semi-autobiographical and she quotes from Audre Lorde's Sister Outsider to remind um, herself and readers that our silences will not protect us. Um, and it kind of reminds me in some ways of Wallace Thurman's novel, The Black of the Berry, which was published in 1929 during the Harlem Renaissance. Um, and that was a book that was very controversial when it was first published because it exposed intraracial colorism and prejudice among African Americans to a wider audience. Um, so similarly, Rum's focus in this novel exposes um, some uncomfortable truths about segments of Palestinian and Arab communities, and it doesn't echo the sort of very familiar and commonplace narrative that we know about oppression of Palestinians by Israelis. This is at its heart not a story about Israel, although Israel does get mentioned occasionally throughout the novel. It's at its heart a family story and a story about the treatment of women. Um, Sorry, I, I wrote up some notes here that I'm referring to. Um, 
So I have heard some criticism of this novel from people who are concerned that it reinforces stereotypes about Arabs. Um, so I would suggest that the events of this novel really could take place in any sort of insular patriarchal religious community. Um, for example, there is a, an Israeli movie from I think 1999 called Kadosh that depicts in quite a similar way to this book um, the treatment of women among ultra-Orthodox Jews. Um, and even, you know, a book like Tara Westover's memoir that came out a few years ago, Educated, shows us this same type of cloistered um, patriarchal family structure in which women are subject to the will of men and feel like they have very few choices for what they can and cannot do. Um, so I think that if you are looking to have your prejudices about Arabs reinforced, then yes, you can find that in this book. But I think if you're any sort of critical reader, then it's probably going to be apparent that the abuse portrayed in this book stems less from Islam itself than it does from, again, the insular nature of the community and also the patriarchy. Um, the other thing I'll say about the sort of controversy around this book is that I feel like the People who would assume that all Arabs are violent or terrorists or something like that, um, and the people who would pick up a book by an Arab American woman writer to read probably do not actually intersect with each other. So I would, I would, uh, I would put that forth too for consideration. Um, in terms of things I did not like as much about this book, I do feel like it definitely got repetitive at times in terms of the language that gets used, and it also at times got repetitive in terms of the scenes of domestic abuse that we witness. Um, you know, no pun intended because it's about abuse, right? But I don't really need to be hit over the head um, with this idea that, okay, abuse is happening, right? Um, and then the writing style of the book was just okay. I didn't feel like there was anything um, really special or extraordinary about it. I did like that the chapters, the individual chapters, were on the shorter side um, because I feel like that kind of gave me momentum as I was reading through the book and made it sort of compulsively readable because you're like, oh, well, you know, this is just like four or five pages. I'll just read one more chapter and, oh, okay, I'll just read another chapter, right? And then before you know it, you've read like 50 plus pages in one sitting. Um, the other thing I'll say um, to sort of circle back to uh, the criticism about stereotypes in the novel is that that's something that Atoff Room herself acknowledges. So I read the I read an ebook version of this from the library, um, and it has an interview with her and an author's note and things like that at the end. So in the interview with her, she specifically says, "Not all Arab." Arab women are abused or go through this. One of my biggest fears in writing this story is that although one part of me wanted to speak up about these issues because they're present today, another part of me didn't want to stereotype a culture that's already stereotyped, outcast, condemned, and scrutinized. I didn't want to add fuel to the fire. It's hard to balance that. How do you know when it's right to stand up for people who are voiceless and oppressed in some way? And how do you know if you're reinforcing stereotypes and where do you draw the line? I don't have an answer for that just yet. Um, so she says that in the interview. There's also an author's note um, where she says that um, she was afraid that she would upset people and fuel further discrimination against a community that's already stereotyped by a single story. It would be the ultimate shame. Most of all, I was afraid of disappointing my community if I didn't filter my own experiences. I knew that as long as I stayed away from controversial topics like arranged marriages and domestic abuse, no one would criticize me or call me a traitor. No one would shun me. No one would try to hurt me. Perhaps these fears are why there aren't many Arab American women represented on bookshelves. Why, whenever I search for our stories in bookstores and libraries, I cannot find them. But censoring myself out of fear would have resulted in a story that didn't reflect the realities of my world, a story that carefully nudged problems and discriminations aside so as not to upset anyone, a story that was filtered, safe, uncontroversial, but most of all, a story with a voice that was inauthentic. Um, and then she goes on to quote Audre Lorde's statement about how your silences will not protect you. Um, so yeah, I, again, I really like this book overall. Um, I think that 
you know, while it's not a perfect book and it does have some problems, um, I found the two main characters pretty well developed and I, again, found the book kind of compulsively readable and quite powerful in its message about the treatment of women, which again, is a message that I've seen portrayed in other cultures, not just an Arab one. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I ended up giving this four stars. If you've read this book and have thoughts about it, I would love to hear them. Please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you're all staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, would it kill you to call your mother? <laughs>